Well, it's a uh, very warm welcome back to second half independent of Tube Studio Commentary. Uh, the game at the Amex has just got underway for the second 45, and it could be a long 45 uh, for Brighton. They are 3 0 down at home to Manchester. They've tried to go on the front foot immediately here with a long ball played down the right hand side, trying to play in one of their two substitutes, Simon Adingra, but he is in an offside position. So just uh, 10 seconds into the game, we already uh, into the second half, I should say, where we have an offside position against uh, uh, Brighton. But that's what they need to do. They've got to try and do something to upset Man City's rhythm. If they can get the next goal in this game, potentially it makes things exciting. But City have looked so strong in that first half. You just really feel it's going to be a difficult one for uh, for Brighton to get back into. But they've won the ball back here at the edge of the area. Pascal Gross breaking into the box. He wants a penalty. I don't think he's going to get one, though. And our referee, uh, Jared Gile, is not interested. It's myself, uh, Paul Shabakovic, and Lewis Rafferty taking you through the action. Lewis, uh, Brighton trying to do something here in the first few seconds of the second half. Well, they need to really, don't they? That's what they need to do. They need to respond. They responded very well after going 1-0 down. Since that second goal went in, it was just cruise control for Manchester City. They, they just passed it around with a lot of confidence. Brighton didn't really have anything. We've just seen the replay of, of the Gross and, and Rodri just really coming together more than anything. Rod Rodri has a, his left arm on Gross's right arm, but I, I don't think it's anything to bring you down. I think Gross is maybe losing momentum and... He's, he's maybe just trying to say to the ref, oh, he's got his arm on me. But, yeah, I don't think it's anything. But, yeah, Brighton, the can't go far. If you've got 4-0 down, it's really, you might as well put on the white flag and get get the rest of your substitutes used up and get everyone ready. But, see, if they're, they're coming, they've got forward with Walker here, so they want to fall, they want to score a lot of goals. And goal difference is rising on this end of season. It now. is, absolutely. City will know all about a goal difference from a previous side to winning campaigns. It's very important that if you can get a few extra goals, Certainly shouldn't take that, uh, but so soon spurn that opportunity. But just to remind you of two 11s, Jason Steeling goal for Brighton. A back four of Odella Fire, who comes on for Joel Veltman. Then it's Paul, uh, uh, Jan Paul van Hecke, Lewis Dunk, and Valentin Barco. The two holder midfielders are Pascal Gross and Carlos Baleba. The three ahead of them are João Pedro, Jakub Moda, and Simon Adingra, who comes on for Adam Lalana. Danny Welbeck is the front man. No change for City. Edison in goal, a back four of Kyle Walker, Nathan Ake, Manuela Kanji, and Josko Gvardio. Rodri and Mateo Kovacic are the two holder midfielders. The three ahead of them are Bernardo Silva. Kevin De Bruyne and uh, Phil Foden with Julian Alvarez as the front man is uh, now back with uh, Brighton captain Lewis Dunk at the edge of his own uh, penalty area back to uh, Jason Steele and over towards uh, Van Hecke who was just uh, called for a foul on uh, Phil Foden crashing into the back of Foden he plays a long ball down the right hand side to pick out a Dingra that's the second time in two and a half minutes that a Dingra is in an offside position yeah he just needs to do better there does a Dingra obviously he's going to be a real outlet with his pace Lallana Fantastic technical player. He never really had pace in his physical prime, and now he's in his latter years. He definitely doesn't have that. And when you have him and Gross on the pitch, technically, yes, superb top players. But you need players who are going to get in behind. And now you have on the left and the right, you have Pedro and you have a Dingra. That's really a lot of pace. That's going to give City questions that they're going to have to deal with. You've got Baleba, who's a real good progressive carrier of the ball. It's just giving City something to think about. And real positive substitutions from from De Zerbi and maybe it can bring Brighton a goal or, or get them back in the game but see if they've been on the ball a lot and, and they're still knocking on with a lot of confidence they look like the team really do, are going to come in with all three points tonight yeah I, I think the City are probably almost expected a little bit of a reaction from Brighton and Guardiola probably would have said to them look just see out the first five ten minutes and then you'll be able to find the sort of space as you found in the uh, first half as Foden now pushing forward for a City challenge by Modder as he uh, tries to play a pass down to the uh, left hand side he feels as though he was fouled he wants a, a free kick Gerard Gile say nothing doing. It's a uh, throw to Brighton. A fire going back towards Van Hecke. Uh, fire again. Back towards uh, Van Hecke. Now towards uh, uh, Jason Steele. Interesting that he's changed both players on that right-hand side. Uh, uh, De Zerbe. We sort of noticed in the first half that it was uh, poor Valentin Barker was being a little bit overrun. But uh, De Zerbe almost wants to give his... Uh, his uh, left back there, a bit of a baptism of fire. Get your thoughts on that in a second, because City, meanwhile, have uh, put together a lovely little move here. It's with uh, Kovacic now trying to thread it through to Foden at the edge of the box. He couldn't quite get the ball away. And now Barco does really well on three occasions there. He was being challenged there, young Barco. Holds, his, holds the ball up for his side. And now we're Modder with a slightly risky ball across his own box, but he gets a big deflection, and it's out for a goal kick. I mean, really good pressing <laughs> once again by City, making it difficult for Brighton, and... I know Barco, he had that mistake which led to Foden's second goal, City's third goal. But I think apart from that, I think he's had a very good game. It's his first start in the Premier League, showing a lot of confidence to come in like that. We've just seen the replay of the free kick and I think if you are Brighton, obviously the free kick ends up taking a wicked deflection off a cross as well to go in the back of the net. But also of how the free kick was, you know, looking back on it, is it really a free kick? Is Even if it is a free kick, should it have been taken where it was? I think if you deserve it, you 
I feel maybe a little bit harshly tried. I can understand if he's not happy with that, but realistically, the third goal you brought it on yourself, and, and since then City have just really just looked the better side. Not to have confidence. We've got a free kick here now, high on the left hand side. A Dingra. He, he's looked since he's come on. I've seen he looked a bit rational, a bit all over the place right now. Really, just trying to settle into the game. Yeah, there's there's a difference between being sort of uh, lively off the bench and trying to stamp your mark on the game, but also you've got to do it uh, with a little bit more. Uh, control than what Adingra is doing right now. He's been caught offside a couple of times, giving away a needless free kick there in a very good position. It's uh, only about seven or eight yards away from the edge of the uh, Brighton penalty area on the left-hand side, uh, right uh, on the wing here. And it's a good opportunity for either the right foot of De Bruyne or the uh, left foot of uh, Foden. Brighton have set up just in front of the uh, penalty spot in terms of their offside line. Just trying to uh, condense their penalty area as much as they can, uh, making it difficult for Manchester City. Let's uh, wait and see. The referee just uh, making sure that uh, one man, a Dingra wall, is in the right place. He's actually stolen a couple of uh, probably a step or two from where he should actually be there, a Dingra. It's uh, still <coughs> not, not able to take this free kick for now. Referee's still trying to do a little bit of housekeeping inside the penalty area. It always confuses me. The referee tells those players not to push and shove, and they're going to wait a second and do exactly the same as soon as the, uh, the referee walks away. But uh, here comes the uh, free kick. It is a left-footed ball in from Foden, aimed at the uh, edge of the six-yard box where Rodri was lurking, but so was Jao Pedro. He puts it out for a corner. Really good free kick from Foden there. and He just whips it into a fantastic area. And if not for the good deflection away from Pedro, I think Rodri's probably putting that in the back of the net. We know how good he is goal-scoring. He scores some important goals. But again, another set-piece opportunity a minute ago. This corner now for City will be Alvarez with the instrument. An opportunity to make it four. He's going to try and get as much whip on this as he can, as you would, as he can, you would imagine. Although uh, uh, Bernardo Silva has gone there for the short ball as well. It's a lot of height on this from uh, Alvarez. It's played across the six-yard box. Just eludes uh, Manuel Akanji. Then it's hooked clear. It's uh, fired clear, actually. There's no uh, chance of any Brighton player getting on the, on the end of that. I think uh, they left all 11 players uh, inside their own penalty area. Didn't want to leave anybody further up the field. We know how dangerous City can be from a set piece. And now Edison has all the time in the world. Uh, just to control this ball. Waiting to see where his uh, teammates are. He's getting a little bit more uh, hurried now by uh, Danny Welbeck just in front of him. Rolls it uh, to uh, Manuela Kanji. 52 and a half minutes on the clock. Unofficial independent off Tube Studio commentary. It's Brighton and Hove Albion nil. Manchester City 3. Just to remind you that uh, on this service, you've got uh, tomorrow night's game between a QPR and Leeds. Every Premier League game over the weekend and a couple of uh, championship games as well as uh, all the leagues now getting towards the uh, business end. Now Brighton do well to win it back here in midfield and João Pedro charging all the way into the penalty, into the six-yard box in fact. It forces a save out of Edison and it's uh, Foden now at the edge of his own box. <coughs> Just under a bit of pressure before eventually uh, it's a long clearance from Walker and now it turns out with a long delay there was actually an offside for Brighton after all of that. Yeah, after all of that good good piece of play from Brighton there and maybe Edison <laughs> picking up a bit of a knock as well. Lovely play from Barco down the left-hand side. I think he's had a really good start to this second half. So Jao Pedro coming down there. And offside will put, put that to bed. But Brighton, they have reacted very well. City, again, very much unfortunate like the first half. Apart from the three times that Steele picked the ball out of his net, he hasn't really had much to do again in this second half. So following that trend, and Brighton is one of them. If they can get a goal, let's say, before the 70th minute, that last 20 minutes put pressure on City and build it and build it up. The fans will get right behind their side as well. And, and that's maybe way back in the game is just try and get that first one, try and get it for a certain amount of time. And if you can't, then you don't really throw bodies forward because City could really then take you apart going over two or three. That's always the danger, I think, for Brighton, trying to, to get that balance between uh, still being competitive in this game but also not turning it into a real dropping 3-0 at home is already bad enough. And as I say, uh, Brighton's season is in danger of uh, fizzling out when you consider that uh, teams like uh, Palace are only four or five points behind Brighton. So maybe I shouldn't have used Palace as an example, of course. Uh, them and Brighton don't get on really, do they? But the uh, point is that when you think that Brighton have had uh, so much more going on for them this season than Palace, and Palace can actually still uh, overtake Brighton or at least get uh, closer to them towards the end of the season, so it's important for a deserving side to uh, finish the season as uh, strongly as possible. And G now over to uh, Ake. Vardio down the uh, left-hand side, getting uh, blocked off by Adingra, going back in towards uh, Rodri. Now it's with uh, Kovacic. Back to Rodri, City into the uh, Brighton half, but still quite a long way away from goal. Brighton still doing what they can in terms of playing a, a high offside. And Heke and Dunk pushing forward all the time as uh, the ball now back with Ake. Rodri under a bit of pressure, Gross and Adingra there just to make uh, things a bit more difficult. 
Even so, since he's still comfortable holding onto the ball, they're not able to get further forward, but they don't look like they're going to lose the ball either. No, they don't. They're just looking in control of the game, I'd say, and they're just very happy right now. They don't want to make a mistake. Rodgers making a mistake there. Well, they have just the given the ball away, yeah, and the Dingra now with a chance. He was uh, being held onto there briefly by uh, Ake. But again, it's that thought process of Brighton that the first thought Baleba had there wasn't to see if there was anyone out wide for a pass. It was to go back into his own half. So it's almost like there's still damage limitation in the way Brighton are playing here. Yeah, what you wanted there is you wanted Baleba just to get up and see if someone, if someone make the run down the right-hand side. I think it was a fire making the run. Just get your head up and make that pass. Make it early. Make City think because in some sense City know that the ball's not going to be played in behind them so there's no need to track a runner in some sense because they know Brighton don't want to do it they know Brighton want to go back so press the press the defenders instead make it easier Brighton are going to make a change though. there'll be Igor coming on for Moda so again maybe this is maybe a change of system maybe a free up the back five at the back and Maybe that just changes it up. Maybe go for a two up top with Pedro and, and Welbeck. Maybe just give City something to think about. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an unusual one. I, I, can't, exact, I can't work out exactly where Moda was supposed to play this evening anyway. He's, I've always seen him as more of an attacking midfielder, but it was almost like he was playing in central midfield and he never really got into that attacking role at all. And actually, in the first 11 minutes of this second half, we barely mentioned him for, for a midfielder. He probably would have liked to have seen a bit more of the ball this evening. Yeah, oh, on paper, he, he lined up, as you say, in that attacking midfielder role, just in behind Danny Welbeck. And half of the time, he's been the one who's been the furthest back of the free of Gross, Baleba, and himself. It's anything but Brighton have a chance to be forward. They do, yeah. It's a ball lost in midfield there by, uh, I think it was De Bruyne who got caught in possession. And it was a quick run down the uh, right hand side from Adingra. And in the end, the cross is uh, charged down and it's out for a uh, corner kick. It was Adingra who got to the ball on the uh, right hand side. I tell you what, that strikes Ake on the arm. I mean, he's close to uh, Ake. The ball is close to uh, Ake. And uh, potentially, I just wonder if there's going to be even a brief uh, VAR delay here to check that or if they're, if they're very happy with it anyway. But uh, it's, yeah, the corner kick's going to be taken, so there's no issue with that as far as uh, the video official is concerned. And it is going to be an outswinging corner from uh, Pascal Gross. Plenty of uh, players waiting inside the uh, penalty area. High ball up from uh, Gross towards the back post. Van Hecke sends a looping ball up in the air, but that's the problem. It was a looping ball up in the air. Never really went so close enough towards goal. An easy save there from uh, Edison, but there was a clash of heads between... Uh, well, actually, it's not a clash of heads. I mean, Dunk seems to be a, a little bit groggy. Guardiola seems to have taken a blow to the back. But uh, both men seem to be OK to play on now. Yeah, I think it was just watching the replay back. Dunk and uh, Van Hecke, they went, both went up. And I think as he's coming down, Dunk just takes one. He just right on the back. And uh, Van Hecke, I think, if anything, his momentum just takes him on to Vardiol. And it's just an unfortunate collision. As you say, maybe a bit of medical attention needed for... For both players, but but they should be all right. Look, it looked a lot worse at first with just both players being down, and it looks like they're holding their heads as well. Vardy all back to his feet now, but yeah, what you wanted there is Van Heck or Dunk to maybe get that shot at goal, maybe just fly it in at Edison or put some momentum. He just looped up in the air and an easy catch for Edison and the Manchester City back on the ball. Yeah, City back on the ball, but unlike City, they've played a long ball from Edison this time. He fires that one all the way to the edge of the Brighton penalty and needed a good strong header back there from Lewis Dunk, but then Brighton give the ball away far too cheaply in front of their own penalty area. Foden now finding Alvarez, who goes for goal it's not the best strike it's straight at uh, Steele it's not the best save either from Jason Steele in fairness he not only does he not catch it he actually uh, spills it by a good five or six yards in front of himself but uh, because it was a City counter after a Brighton mistake there was nobody following that up and Steele can jump on the rebound yeah it just bobbles up into him as his a shot's coming in but again Brighton give away the ball out of the pitch and City have a chance yeah they do again it's uh, ball played in by Phil Foden against a big deflection there of uh, Carlos Baleba and it's out for a, a corner kick but uh, this doesn't look good for Brighton that's twice inside a minute where they've lost the ball uh, inside their own half when they were in possession and uh, giving a chance to Manchester City yeah and again it's just they just look a little bit hectic a little bit nervy when playing out from the back I know as we spoke about Manchester City they're a different animal a different beast in the sense of pressing but as you said earlier that, that's what you need to adapt and if you can see your players are confident change the game quickly corner taken quickly but chance still alive for City yeah Bernardo Silva into Foden, uh, into Foden Foden then goes across the penalty area flicks a, a, a light ball around about the penalty spot he's headed away back towards De Bruyne he uh, skips away from one challenge but can't skip away from the challenge of Barco it's played back towards Jason Steele and then it's uh, well it's not the best uh, ball out from uh, uh, it's not the best ball out from uh, Van Hecke out towards a fire and eventually Brighton do lose the ball at the edge of their own box. It's a strike towards goal where uh, Alvarez took his, uh, made, made his mind up early. He was going to go for goal. It's not too far away from goal in fairness uh, from the Argentine. 
As uh, Steele left that one feeling fairly confident, but I tell you what, actually, uh, just uh, skims the top of the net as well. That wasn't far away at all. No, he just he didn't get the dip as, he, as soon as he wanted to. It was dipping after it went over the bar. But yeah, I think watching it back, I think Steele looked a bit more confident than maybe he should have with with the opportunity. Again, it's a goal kick. He's just going to roll it out, and this time we will go long to Igor on the left hand side. It's looking like he's lining up at left back, uh, and, and Barco's going as a left winger. And yeah, that's not, it's not it's not a bad idea. I see we've seen uh, a few players now who are sort of learning to play in both of those positions across across some of the teams in the league. And I think Barco would certainly be suited in that role. As I mean, there's no need for any delay here, Mr. Lines, but we could see that uh, coming a mile off. Uh, there was a chance to play the ball down the right-hand side, and I think it was uh, Adingra. He stopped his run. He learned his lesson from the previous two times that he was offside, but sadly, João Pedro didn't. But then he uh, turned around and started having a bit of a go at Adela Fire, saying, I want that pass a bit quicker. Yeah, I think he needs to as well, but also his run could have been better, I do think, because... He's one of them where he knew he was offside, but he continued his run. So I think maybe off is just looking up goes, oh, if you're making a run, you must be onside. If he stops his, his run there and just try, tries to reset, maybe a fire looks up and he goes, oh, he's offside anyway. But Brighton, they're getting on the ball a bit better. Maybe this tweak of tactic, he's worked a bit better. Paul pass there by Barco. But they are looking a little bit better with a dinger on the right, Barco on the left, linking up a bit better. And he's brought maybe just a bit more energy to the side. I think so. I think also the, the, the old cliche, but it would have just been deserving. Say, look, forget the first half, just go out there and do what you can to win the second half you know try and stifle Manchester City get a goal do something for our fans but just as I say that it's a long ball over the top Medicine it's a great ball as well and Walker's broken forward and he skips past the challenger Barco he goes straight into Steele but then the ball is rolled in towards Alvarez and Alvarez does make it 4-0 on uh, 62 minutes and would you believe it that after all this possession for City all this passing now Brighton on happy with the goal but it looks like Edison could have an assist yeah I mean what a piece of play it was there Brighton they're asking for, I think, a handball. I think maybe that Steele wants a foul on himself from Walker trying to win the ball. He's claiming a handball as well. I don't know who's handballed it in, in that uh, sort of scuffle there. We see what, what happens. It's Edison with a long ball uh, from his own penalty. Uh, Walker can't be offside, of course, because he's inside his own half when that pass is played. He takes it down. He then uh, rolls it across uh, towards Alvarez. But where the handball has happened, I do not know, because unless Walker's handballed it as the ball is broken, no, there's no... don't think there's any arm there. The arm is out from Walker. And uh, potentially, that's what Jason Steele has seen. But uh, no, I don't think there's any handball there. I could see why it would look like it's a handball from Steele's uh, perspective. I thought, I, I, like you, I thought maybe he was more unhappy with the fact that Walker went in with studs. Um, but doesn't actually catch the keeper very much, though. No, he doesn't at all, does he? Really good finish from Alvarez in the end. And just as we're saying about, you said, that possession for Brighton, but we spoke about in the first half, City are very happy that they can take you apart in so many different ways because that, again, was because Brighton are throwing so many players forward, they just used Walker's pace in behind. They used Brighton, just cut them apart, really. I don't know if there's a VAR check. We're just waiting on there, that. There might be because there's... Well, no, we've kicked off again, so there is no VAR check. I mean, uh, as I say, the way that uh, Walker went in... Uh, studs into the arms of steel. You say there'll be people who say that's the way you should go in on uh, on keepers in that sort of position when the ball's there to be won. But uh, different day, different referee might have been viewed differently as it's played back to Jason Steele now. And uh, sadly, from Brighton's perspective, the next goal in this game after the three 0 at half time is another goal for Man City. Four 0 now on 63 minutes, and uh, it's going to be a difficult one this for Brighton. Meanwhile, City's. Uh, Goal difference, like a, a, a meter in a taxi, is uh, slowly ticking up and up now, isn't it? <laughs> it is, and you spoke about it earlier, 2012, that, that was a death, that's what won in the league. It was that goal difference you spoke about. If you can get that extra one or two goals every game compared to what maybe you usually would do with Arsenal, they have eight goals to catch, which is not massive, but that could end up being the difference. If Manchester City, if they get their game in hand and don't win it, could come down the goal difference, but Brighton are coming forward. They do, a lovely ball there from Barco finding uh, Welbeck, and then Welbeck across towards Adingra. Adingra goes for goal. Both teams saying it should be our ball, and I think the linesman has gone with uh, City's appeal, said that it's just going to be a goal kick. This is nice from Brighton, though. That's nice bit of link-up play there with uh, Baleba finding uh, Barco. Barco then playing a lovely ball towards Welbeck, but the angles were getting too tight, and Guardia was always too close to a dingra for him to get a clean shot away. And I tell you what, it's the right call that it should only be a goal kick as well. Uh, I think as well, I think a dingra's first touch is really poor. It takes it into the path of Vardiol. You want it to take it in the path of the right foot of a dingra, or if anything, just pass it back into Welbeck. Maybe he's a, the better option. Phil Foland's gone down off the ball, I think, with Van Hecke there. He's just coming together, but he's only in the path of his head is Foden, so we might have a stoppage in play for that now. Yeah, he looks like he's in a bit of pain there, Foden, as well. Van Hecke has, uh, seems to have had a bit of a, a thing with Foden all evening, hasn't he? He's bumped into him two or three times now. 
And so I could understand it if it was uh, somewhere in uh, Brighton's half, but this is at the edge of the Man City penalty area. Yeah, a bit, a bit weird, uh, obviously, Foden. He's just getting back, he's just holding the back of his head and rubbing it. I think maybe it was just a collision. It looked like maybe the shoulder of Van Hecke just collided with the back of Foden's head just as it was a collision. Nothing really too menacing there. Seeing Gareth Southgate in the stands, he'll be very pleased from Foden's performance. And I mean, Foden's on for a hat trick and he got a hat trick a few weeks ago, a few games ago. Uh, and maybe he wants to grab a second entry, for say. Well, why not? I mean, th- th- there's been a lot of debate about how you sort of uh, manage all of these uh, star England midfielders, but surely, regardless of what formation, what you do, the Southgate has to have, be able to find a way of having Foden starting for him. You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? He's a top performer, and I said maybe England are too blessed with riches of attacking output, but there's certain players you just go, he's got to be in. He's he does, he does. I mean, wh- whether or not uh, Bellingham, of course, in that slightly deeper role or in that number 10 role, Foden in a wide role, whatever, th- th- there's got to be a formation where both of them can start for England because they, they provide so much in terms of an attacking threat. Interesting there that Van Hecke offered a hand of apology there to Foden and uh, the uh, City man wasn't having any of it. I think he feels as though uh, uh, Van Hecke has been a little bit... Uh, over the top with him this evening on a couple of occasions. The City playing a bit of a risky ball across their own penalty area. Edison right across his own six-yard box. Brighton pressing now. But uh, City, it's almost like they've been asked by Guardiola to make things a bit more difficult. It's like a training exercise where they try and put themselves under pressure. And they get out of it anyway. They're, they're uh, back on the halfway line now, trying to fashion together another attack. And it's a lovely ball from Alvarez down the right-hand side here for Walker. He's getting towards the penalty area. Walker then holds it up. He's got De Bruyne ahead of him. Tries to play a square to Foden. And it's a header from Beleba, which for a second looked as though it might have surprised Jason Steele. But thankfully, there was no power on that header from Beleba. It was just a cushion ball. And it's a comfortable save for Steele. But City, having looked under pressure in their own box, three or four passes later, they're very nearly scoring themselves. Yeah, and that's, that was the difference for me, is that even though City are putting themselves under pressure and um, Brighton are doing fantastic on the press, City just looks much more, much more confident in knocking it around. Whereas when Brighton have the ball, you feel like a mistake's going to happen here, a pass is just going to go to a City player or something like that. Whereas for City there, you never felt like there was any, any problem that they were going to beat the press. And all evening long, the views, the outlet of Walker's pace to get in behind, it happened again there. And like you say, it looked like the Steel was just going to come out and claim the ball, but ever, maybe didn't hear the shout, or, or maybe Steel didn't give, give him the shout, heads it back to his path, and that, that could have been an ugly goal on another occasion. Well, it could have been, and uh, as I say, the, the ball going down, as we can see now, uh, Mateus Nunez, or Nunez, I should say, sorry, getting ready to come on for uh, uh, Manchester City, and I just wonder... Of course, he's had the uh, the pleasure of and privilege of working with Guardiola uh, all season. But uh, if you'd have said to him that you're going to play sort of one in eight, one in nine games for City, or you're going to uh, potentially have a, a much bigger role at Wolves, I just wonder whether he would have uh, thought twice about moving. But then on the other side, if you've got an opportunity to play for Man City and for Guardiola, who's going to turn that down? Uh, it's one of them, isn't it, as well? Because Manchester City plays so many games. I think that's the thing where you go... You might play one in eight, but then due to injuries, you, you, you're our second option. Pop pass by Rodri and Brighton have a chance. All of a sudden, it is a chance. It's a dingo that brings it forward. It's a ball to Jao Pedro, who just loses his balance at the crucial moment. But uh, Barco able to pick this ball up for, for Brighton, and he gets uh, well marshaled, though, by uh, uh, Bernardo Silva. De Bruyne is taken down, but the referee gives City the advantage. They don't really use the advantage. They, they, their first thought is to play the ball back towards Kovacic. Slow things down here, but uh, they're still in comfortable possession in front of their own penalty. Here we're at the uh, three-quarter mark in this game. 68 minutes gone. It is Brighton nil, uh, Man City 4, and it will be Lewis to take us through to full-time. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a really good watch. We just hope that maybe in these latter stages it doesn't really tep- tep it out and it becomes just a training exercise for Manchester City. I know Brighton aren't maybe going to go gung-ho and, and look to score four goals or five goals, but if you like to think that Brighton will just keep going until the end. Deserve. He's that kind of manager who wants his side to look at the positives for example if they could get a goal or, or two in this game as you say about winning halves they've won the second half 2-1 that, that's a positive to take into the next few games for, for Brighton yeah, just warming up on the side I think they're ready to go whenever the ball's next out of play is Grealish and Nunes who will be coming on the field for City now that really three points are wrapped up now for Guardiola it's about wrapping up those players ready for the next few games Brighton just knocking it around and they just want to get back on the ball, City have really took control of of this game. But Brighton coming forward now, lovely piece of play by a fire. He's got a dingra in support as well. Uses him. City have got a lot of players back though. Pedro's made his way to this right hand side. He's done well to get away from from De Bruyne. He's still on the ball. He's still going. He's still running at players. Tries to get away from Aki. He does what a oh. slow on him run, and I think that's a penalty. The referee got a point. I the referee think. says no, but I think that's a penalty from my I think both view. of us think that's a penalty, and I think almost just the endeavour of Jao Pedro, you almost want it to be a penalty, don't you? As uh, Gvardiol 
He's now trying to say there's no contact there, that there's, there's no foul. But, I mean, it's great work from Jao Pedro to break into the box. I'll tell you what, if that happens to a Man City player in the Brighton penalty area, I mean, uh, at the risk of sounding like a, 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 a Forest uh, executive, <laughs> I don't want to perhaps go down that road necessarily. But that, to me, if that happens at the other end and it's a Man City player being clipped like that, I think it would be a penalty. I think as well, I'm very shocked he hasn't had a VAR review where we haven't seen the game. is still going on. So I don't know if possibly when the ball goes out of play, they will. But João Pedro with a fantastic moment there of... Just a special piece of play, slalom him run to get past Aki, and then Vardy all met him. The referee is saying no. I don't know if that's a no to a VAR I, check. I, or I, I think I think that's probably saying the VAR have checked it, and there is no penalty. I think that uh, they've had enough time now as well, and now we can finally see uh, Mateus Nunes uh, coming on here for uh, Man City. But we'll see this again here. Lovely little dancing run from uh, João Pedro. And Guardio is behind Jao Pedro, doesn't get any of the ball and uh, clips the heels of the man who has the uh, possession of the ball. To me, I mean, arguably you'd say it's two players running for the ball and depending on the angle, depending on how you look at it, I mean, it is, is uh, perhaps Jao Pedro guilty of doing the old Jamie Vardy sort of fish, fish hook there where he's trying to get a, uh, put his own leg out to get a foul. I still think that, that there's many, many decisions, many penalties this season that, that, that have been given for something very similar. Well, I think you said it earlier in the game sometimes it's about different referees will give different different options and, and then they'll give different decisions. Maybe, unfortunately, for, for Brighton, that, that's one of them. But City will make the changes. It's Grealish and Nunes off, uh, on, sorry, and it's De Bruyne and Foden off. So, goal scorers, it was De Bruyne who opened the scoring around the 17th minute and Foden, he got that double in the first half so he denied that hat trick but now he can just stay on the bench they've got Forrest away in a few days on on Sunday afternoon and the 4 to kick off he can set on the service as well Brighton there away visiting the Vitality on Sunday just a few hours before at 2 o'clock which you can catch on the service as well and that's one of them Ford and De Bruyne they've done their job City all three points obviously <laughs> it's one of them You've got Nunes and Grealish, top players coming on. It's not like you're losing anything. Top players for De Bruyne, but you're not really losing too much in the players coming on either. No, you're not. And these are players that have got a point to prove. We mentioned already Nunes about his limited game time. Jack Grealish, of course, is... Uh, as I say, I've, 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 I've always been a big fan of Jack Grealish. I just wonder whether or not he's pigeonholed himself a little bit too much by being this sort of right-footed left winger. I think there was a lot more to his game at one point, and potentially with the amount of talent in Man City, he's sort of been forced to go down that one road. But I think that there's potentially a lot more that, that Jack Grealish could do as well. Yeah, we've, we've seen Aston Villa and England playing mid that number 10 role and more freedom, whereas... He, he, even back in a, in, a, in a midfield three as well, just just in that sort of, maybe not necessarily a holding role, but, but essentially he could certainly do a lot more in that central role. But now here come uh, City again, breaking forward here with uh, De Bruyne. It's Nunes into Grealish. Vardy all with a good cross, met by Steele though, and good attack there from City. But I, as you say, maybe that's the thing that... Nunes and, and Grealish because they haven't played that much. That you couldn't go either way, Kai. Maybe that's the hunger that when they come on, they really want to show Guardiola, or maybe they just go, well, I'm not going to be picked anyway. So it doesn't matter what I do. It can, can go either way. It can do. Yes, I think. For, for, I mean, we've seen obviously a, a slightly more sort of extreme version of Grealish's uh, situation being frozen out of the team slightly. Of course, with Calvin Phillips, who was signed by City as being a real one. It looked like a sort of uh, the next pretender of Rodri almost, but it hasn't really worked out for him at uh, City. And as a result of that, it's not really he's not had enough game time, but Gareth Southgate insisted on picking him all the time, which potentially put a lot of pressure on fo uh, on uh, on Phillips. And now, of course, he's not had the best sort of time on loan out at West Ham either. Right, and good piece of play now, just picking City apart. Long ball looking for the path of a Dingra. That can't be just too fast and too strong. He'll get there first. Made real light work of it there. Did the Swiss central defender. Now City just back on the ball, just about to hit the 74th minute. If you just joined us for the latter stages of the game, independent off-tube studio commentary of the game at the Amex. Brighton hosting Manchester City, but it's Manchester City with four goals. Two of the good goals in the first half from De Bruyne, a double from Foden and in the second half. Really finishing off Julian Alvarez to make it four goals for Manchester City. A really good afternoon and again, just giving City confidence. They've got a good couple of games, as you said. They're in the FA Cup final. That's a long way away, but they do give away the ball there. 
Coming forward now is Welbeck. Will he go for a strike at goal? Brings it onto his left foot. A lot of City players here will go for the strike. Never really got the connection he wants on it. If anything, got too much power, too much pace on it. Again, Brighton, when they have got the ball, they've won the ball well chances. But they just haven't clicked at all in the final third tonight. No, they haven't. It, it, it's just a little bit too much uh, pressure. That looks like it may be the last action here for uh, Danny Welbeck. He's going to get the hook here late on. He's going to be replaced uh, by Marco Mahoney. Another promising young Irishman following in the uh, footsteps of uh, uh, Evan Ferguson, of course, who's struggled this season in terms of injuries and uh, game time. But an opportunity here now for O'Mahoney. Yeah, good chance. Maybe it's one of them where this is the time to maybe just throw a few youngsters on to give them the chance they can play against Manchester City and, again, just get on the pitch, get a few minutes under the belt and really prove themselves maybe too, too deserving. But be silly on the ball with a kanji. Bernardo Silva, he's really sitting more as a right back, if anything, which really gives Walker the license to to fly up and down that right hand side. Rodri turns his man and he will win a free kick just inside Brighton's half. It was Jao Pedro who gave away the ball. But again, you look on paper, we saw a few lineups, it looks like 4 2 3 1, 3 2 5. Uh, it was just seen on some, some places before the game, but it's just so, so fluid is his system that Bernardo Silva's a right winger, but he's played. At left back, he's played at right back. He's, he, he's just so fluid that uh, for Brighton, they've never been able to get hold of City because they don't know where the players are. No, they don't. And that, that, that has been part of the problem, I think, uh, for uh, for Brighton. And uh, I think I, I don't think the Serbia will be worrying too much about the the score. I think he would say that overall in the 90 minutes, his team have competed, but uh, potentially just uh, a little bit overrun. And uh, Carlos Baleba there, I mean, I say taking one for the team, but when your team are already 4-0 down at home, and an opposition midfielder turns you on the halfway line. I'm not sure that pulling his shirt is taking one for the team. That's probably just a little bit careless of, uh, from Baleba. As well, maybe shows a bit of frustration from the midfielder as well, not being his night. Seven yellow cards for the season for Brighton's number 20, Baleba. And maybe just if you sit here, just time with them. You know that Baleba now can't really put a foot in. I know the game's really gone, but if you're coming forward, last man, for example, coming forward in the last few minutes, you know Baleba can't make that tackle. But City knocking around there nearly... It's like a painful one there on yeah. uh, Kovacic. Referee just allowing play to go on because City pushing forward now with Bernardo Silva. He's got a chance to be able to play in Nunes. Goes against it. Goes to Walker. Brighton is sitting really compact and, and really deep and making it really difficult for City even though the four goals to the good. They haven't really lost the discipline, which, which is good to see. But again, if you're Manchester City, you're four goals up. If Brighton is going to sit deep, you're just going to knock it around and it's going to be a really easy close to the game for City. Yes, it is. It, it, it's, it, it's a danger. This game could just peter out with City holding possession and not uh, being too worried about pushing too far forward and Brighton just happy to keep them at bay. But uh, you always imagine with Guardiola's team, if they sniff even the slightest opportunity to get forward, they're going to try and take it. Yeah, Nunes and Bernardo Silva there linking up well. Cal Walker will give away the ball there. No, he won't. He will win a throw and it looks like free substitution for City. I think it was Doku Lewis as well as well as Sergio Gomez. Gomez, so yeah. Three changes for City. Again, three points really secured. It's just get, get your players off and get ready for the next game at this point. Yeah, absolutely. So Bernardo Silva, he's uh, getting the hook to be replaced by uh, Jeremy Doku. It's quite rare to see Doku and uh, Grealish on the pitch. Normally those two are competing for the same position. Walker for Rico Lewis is a standard uh, substitution there, I would say. Just waiting to see who Gomez is going to come on for. Be Walker, the captain. He's just taking the armband off. Believe it, just to see who's going to be wearing the armband for the remainder of the game for City. Also, Walker's just walking the other side of the pitch to, to where he's going to end up walking off. And Nathan Ake to pick up the armband. City's number six, a Dutch international. He'll be the one carrying the armband for City. And just, again, we're just waiting to be Gomez, who's coming on. And Rodri is the other man to come off. So, you look at who's gone off in the sense you, you've lost Bernardo Silva, Carl Walker, Kevin De Bruyne, Rodri and Phil Foden and in some sense maybe they are I know City have 11 fantastic players they're fantastic players on the bench but maybe that's in some sense your first five names on the team sheet ready for Sunday yes yes I think so and uh, as you mentioned that City's uh, next game away to uh, Nottingham Forest that'll be a tough game as well the City ground will be absolutely buzzing uh, for all the uh, uh, tongue-in-cheek comments about that situation you know Forest did have some uh, some arguments in terms of the decisions that went against them at Goodison it's also fair to say that this secrecy of not releasing the audio seems busy are when you think that other sports like cricket and rugby and NFL, you actually hear the referees live. There's no editing whatsoever. Whatever the refs say in the VAR room about a decision, you hear it as it's being said. And to me, it's crazy that football still seems to think it has to have this veil of secrecy all the time. Yeah, especially, I mean, maybe the, the reason they don't want to maybe release anything is, was it the 
Tottenham at the Liverpool game that it was released and maybe a bit embarrassing from of their Of course, side. yeah, with Daz and all his mates, they're getting that decision completely wrong. So potentially there, there, there is that as well. But that, that's no reason to... That, as I say, the, the more they cover it up, the more people are going to get to suspicious of it. And is the, you know, if I say, if, if the referee union wants to be don't want to have this opinion that they're sort of trying to avoid any scrutiny and they're above any kind of uh, scrutiny. Well, they shouldn't be. You know, if, if, as I say, everybody else gets the chance to have uh, an opportunity to see these things, and I, I'm not really sure why it hasn't. But the, getting back to the point, it's going to be a real atmosphere at uh, the City Ground because in many ways it sort of unified the Forest fans in, in, in that sort of uh, fight to stay up at the end of the season. Uh, in the time we've just been talking, City have been on the ball, knocking it around very well. The substitutes always just change the game, but... Brighton have won the ball out of the pitch. Gross passing to Pedro, just intercepted there, but still coming forward with Barco. Back into Gross. Looks like Doku's on that right hand side, and Alvarez is just floating around. Grealish on the left, Nunes in that number 10, and Gomez and Kavacic, that double pivot. On the back four, Vardiol, Ake, Akanji, and then Rico Lewis on that right hand side in place of Kyle Walker. Van Hecke, he's looking to come forward. A fire, linking up with a Dingra. Back to Beleba. City, they're, they're very happy for Brighton just have the ball now. Lovely ball switch to the left hand side to Barco. Will he whip a ball and he does to the back post? Maybe that took a deflection or, or it didn't. It just looked like a poor uh, cross. It looks like he's just uh, hit that with, a, with the top of the laces. Unfortunately, Barco not quite made the contact that he would have wanted there. He would have been uh, disappointed with that. As uh, we see the uh, uh, Brighton chief executive and uh, deputy chairman there, Paul Barber. Certainly seen as one of the uh, the better executives uh, across football. Of course, now these days we're seeing uh, release clauses being uh, added into contracts for executives. That's that's what it's come to with football now. Of course, the issues with uh, Dan Ashworth at Manchester United, uh, and of course, uh, I believe Jason Wilcox going to Manchester United as well. Of course, from Southampton. But uh, it's an interesting thing now that even the uh, the businessmen around football are now becoming uh, a prized asset. Yeah, there's tr maybe a new transfer market for for the executives, directors of football. <laughs> All the kind of technical directors, you know, all that maybe is just adding up. And you, well, you see how well run a club like Manchester City are, Brighton are. I mean, Br Brighton are example. I said maybe you won't be old enough, but I'm certainly old enough to remember a time when Brighton were playing uh, at Gillingham's ground. Before that, they were playing at a, a ground which was not fit for football. It was falling apart. They effectively had uh, supporters with buckets collecting loose change just to try and keep the club alive. So to go from that to 20 years later being an established paid, you know, completely bought and paid for Premier League team with an excellent uh, structure really is, is just huge credit to, to the owners and to everyone at Brighton. But here, here they come now, potentially right on cue there. There might have been an attack for Brighton, but sadly it's a ball into the box, which is just a bit too quick for a dingra. Again, just that <coughs> final third. The won it well, the pressed well. We see Igor who won it and back on his weaker right foot. Just tries to really fire it into the path of a dingra. He just can't really get a touch. Really good defending as well from Ake though to Sure, it is a dozen of ball, but again, they just haven't clicked. They haven't had too many chances. City have done really well defensively, but when Brighton have had a chance, they just haven't clicked in the final third. Nothing's gone right for them. In some sense, you, you spoke about coming to the second half, Deserby saying to it to his side, forget about the first half, go out there in a the second. This might be one of them then again. Just forget, forget about today. Nothing went right for us. Maybe we should have had a penalty. Nothing's gone right for us. Let's just focus on the next game and let's focus on going to vitality and improving and changing our performance for them. Absolutely, they're, they're still, but Brighton can certainly uh, still finish the season on a higher say Bournemouth away is their next game. Uh, then they're at home to Villa, away to Newcastle, at home to Chelsea. And they end the season at home to Manchester United. So most of their games uh, before the end of the season are at home. So there's still some points to be had. Chance for them to make, maybe take some momentum then into next season. Bill, have a good end in the last few games. And of course, and still plenty of question marks as to whether they'll have their same, uh, the same manager at the start of next season. Yeah, the new manager in, which also, if the Zerbi's out, that's a new manager. Maybe certain players that the new manager doesn't want, the manager does want. So maybe getting big fees. We've seen Brighton get big fees for players before. So we know that there's, there's maybe money there to be spent. But at the same time, with how the run, it's maybe more about selling that player in the summer to them bring. Well, but then obviously he said maybe Evan Ferguson, he's had a few injury problems, hasn't he? Maybe he hasn't had the season he wants, but he's still a very young prospect that maybe if manager comes in and goes, well, I want a more solidified, experienced striker, but we get a lot of money for Evan Ferguson and, and do that and then we can change his quality. I think so, though. The trouble is, I think potentially his value might have sort of stagnated because he hasn't really done much this season, has he? He was a sort of the promising player last season and he hasn't really been able to kick on. Here's a combination of injuries. It's not just the case that he's not been able to, to play uh, because he's not been picked, but uh, he hasn't really been able to, to get that, side, that same sort of level. He really burst onto the scene in the last sort of 10 games of last season. 
Yeah, around about the same time, of course, as we saw that uh, uh, amazing goal. I'm trying to remember who the player was. That was it, uh, not in C. So I'll come back to that in a second because there's a chance here for Brighton after Edison came a long way out trying to close down Adingra. He, uh, part, he managed to get the ball away from the box, but then a fire dawdled and he couldn't quite get a shot away. An empty goal. Uh, again, it's just one of them, isn't it? That uh, uh, Edison's made that mistake. I'm not saying a fire has to shoot, but maybe take the opportunity. Good piece of play. Uh, uh, Igor coming down the left hand side puts it back into Jao Pedro, but he just doesn't get the connection on it. It's really whipped into him too fast and tries to get it on his right boot. It just goes wide. Again, really good play by Bright. Probably the best piece of play I, I, they've had all evening, I would say. Good cross back in, and it's just unfortunate that Jao Pedro can't put that in. No, he's, as I say, he's hitting it straight ahead of himself, and he's still a, a couple of yards away from being actually in front of the goal, so that shot does go wide. If you, you would have just been able to get a bit more of an angle on it, and he's a bit unfortunate there as well, that just as he's running away from having that shot, runs straight into the big shoulder of his own teammate there, O'Fire. I think maybe uh, there's a lot of players in Brighton, that, that he's a very big guy, he's a fire, always wanted to be running into his shoulder. I'm surprised that Jao Pedro didn't go more flying than he did, long ball of Doku dealt well though by he got just into the 85th minute now, just less than five minutes to play, added time and I mean, if, I mean, if you're bright, you know, you're thinking, I hope the referee doesn't have too many minutes because it's really game done and over. It is, yeah. I think that from Brian's point of view, it's it's one of those that they just have to they have to forget about it as, as quickly as possible. And they're not the only ones who have to uh, you know, <laughs> assess a Man City defeat in that way. You know, City have uh, been streets there, but just as we say that, potentially a chance there. Brighton were trying to win the ball back in midfield. But even if you get physical with City, they can match you as well. Yeah, I think that's something that Guardiola has really added to this city side compared to his past sides at City by Munich and, <laughs> and Barcelona it's, it's, it's not just it's a top technical side it's a real physical side as well you look at someone like Rodri you look at he's not played tonight Diaz you look at Kanji they're all top technical players but they're just as physical as they're coming Ireland as well of course yeah that, that's, so that's the thing that as you say oh we're going to try and be physical with them because that's what you think why they all have small technical players no they can really match your strength for strength as well they can and so that's something that as you say City needs to be competitive in every uh, area of the field and uh, to say they've got uh, a goalkeeper who's very comfortable on the ball, the defenders who can play as midfielders, uh, midfielders who can get them goals, and a striker who's probably the best, one of the best in the world. So Guardiola really has got the recipe for every area on, on the pitch. Well, well, and he's not even started, and they've won four goals to nil. So the goals can come, as you said, the goals <coughs> come from everywhere. Looking at Manchester City's next five fixtures, the last five fixtures, away to Forest, at home to Wolves, away to Fulham, away to Spurs, and then on the last day of the season, hosting West Ham. 19 for me, that'll be a big blockbuster there. The final league games of the Premier League 10 at the same time, so could really come down to that last Sunday. Could the it certainly Taurus. could, yeah. I mean, it's been a fascinating season with, I say, three teams. Liverpool probably with those defeats recently might only just be down to two teams now. But uh, yeah, the fact that uh, Spurs could be the kid make, king maker, of course, in those last five games, Spurs play all three of the, uh, the, the title contending teams. And as well, that'll have a real effect on the top four with Aston Villa and, and Spurs battling for that. Manchester United trying to find their way back in the the three points last night at, at home to Sheffield United is could really make a difference, but it's really, really intriguing coming into the last few stages of the season. As you said, now Manchester City this time last year. I know the title race is a, a different every season, but they had a Champions League semi-finals we're dealing with. They had other games where, as you said earlier, there's just full focus on the league. They're going to have five games, then they're going to play their FA Cup final. After that, there's no distractions coming into this. I know Arsenal are, out as well there's no distractions for the rest of the teams but now City have no distractions you just look and go well there's no reason they really should have probably won the league title they, they have I, I, I think that we mentioned this earlier they're more determined because they are out of the uh, the Champions League and uh, as I say they can forget about the FA Cup now until the uh, the end of the season when that uh, final comes around it's had a few weeks to go I think before that uh, final is played I know they've uh, messed around a little bit with the dates of that and I think uh, the final is now set to be uh, after the end of the season, which is a good thing, I think that uh, I, I wasn't a fan of it previously, sort of being sort of wedged into a, a, a Saturday and a 5:15 kickoff as well. So it is a standard 3 p.m. Uh, kickoff on the Saturday, the 25th of uh, May. Another Manchester derby in the FA Cup final. But to say we've allowed ourselves a few little tangents here because things have just uh, wound down a little bit here at uh, uh, the Amex. It's City in pretty much in full control of the ball. Brighton just uh, biting, trying to win the ball back. But City aren't, aren't, really, uh, aren't, aren't giving it away. And you can see Guardiola and his assistants uh, just very comfortable. Yeah, they're just disgusting. We, we've seen that, we, after the game, Pep Guardiola speaking to his players after a performance, speaking to opposition players as well. And as, as Paul said, Manchester City have been on the ball the entire time, knocking around confidently. They are high up the pitch now with Gomez on the left-hand side. But again, Brighton, they're pressing, but they're not pressing with intensity. They're not pressing to 
really try and get win the ball back and do anything. And I know the game's is done. We are into the 89th minute. So just to wait in extra time, as I said, I couldn't see any more than, I mean, in some sense, you'd like to think that referees will understand that it's 4 0. Is there any need for any extra time at this point? We will see it back. I can't see maybe more than three. Well, minutes. I suppose that the other argument is that if uh, if they cut the uh, injury time, then potentially a goal wouldn't be scored that could affect things later on. But we'll, uh, we'll get a th go through on that in a second because here come a City now with Doku. Doku down the right hand side, just put a ball into the path of Lewis, headed away by Baleba, just opened up there, and Rico Lewis nearly had the opportunity there. Kovacic on the ball, now into Alvarez, he's linked up play very neatly all evening long, into Grealish, just about to hit the 90th minute at the Amex, really fantastic three points for City, can really give them a lot of momentum coming into the back end of the season, you think sometimes could have lost that, losing on the penalties to Real Madrid in the Champions League, maybe heads could have dropped, but not this evening, they've looked absolutely top notch, they've looked at every single bit of the team they are, and five minutes of Ali time, and in the sense of, I know what you mean, so if Brighton get a goal, that could change goal difference, Man City get a goal, could change goal difference, but as well, if you're Brighton or Manchester City, the game's done, if one of your players now picks up an injury, yeah. that's where I think it's another I think, question. Yeah, I mean, as I say, the five minutes of injury time, I'm a little bit surprised that it is as much as that, but then, as I say, that it's been worked out that on average between 12 and 15 minutes are lost in every game when teams aren't even trying to waste time, so I suppose that uh, there's always a justification for adding a few minutes, and Brighton are on the attack now, it's a cross coming in, which is missed by everybody. Uh, in the middle of the penalty area drops to a Dingra it's almost like he wasn't expecting it there and he just uh, sticks a leg out at it can't control it and it's out for a goal kick yeah, it was a good ball in from Jao Pedro a lot of whip a lot of bend on it he was looking at Phil Foden he's making him the player of the match three shots two on target two goals three chances creating a 94% passing accuracy a fantastic performance from further he's just gone from strength to strength this season yeah I mean people talk about uh, City perhaps regretting selling Cole Palmer but then you look at how much Foden has come on this season I mean of course uh, a fully fit and a fully happy Cole Palmer playing at Man City that would make them even more unstoppable wouldn't it but uh, it just shows that Foden really has become the complete player and here comes uh, Nunes with a great run for City good run from Nunes open it up it's Alvarez into Rico Lewis when he put it back into the area looking for Grealish Van Hecke though with a good clearance it will get stay with Brighton it's being met by João Pedro into Barco. Now maybe Brighton, they could just open up City if they want to. If they're just a bit quicker, I know they are 4 nil down. Maybe this was nil nil at this point that have got up and got the pass quicker out to a fire and a dinger down this right hand side. But it was just one of them where I don't understand it's 4 nil and it's not that you're going to be going for it, going for it. But at that point, just by all but all evening, Brighton have just been too slow when they've got into positions where. If they get their head up, they could have made the pass. And they've just taken an extra touch, an extra pass. And they've really slowed it down and made it a bit easier for City that way. They have, yeah. I think that in, in many ways it's, it's just given that City a little bit more freedom. But there's another chance here now for Brighton. They're still trying, to their credit, to try and get an opportunity here later on. But a ball into the box is dealt with uh, by Akanji. It's fallen to Barco down the left-hand side. He looks to whip a ball into a dangerous area onto the head of Aki. But it will go wide for a Brighton corner. And as we say about goal difference, maybe if you are Arsenal, you're just like the Brighton just nicked one, that's an extra goal going towards us. They've got a corner that could do it here. That's exactly right. And uh, as I say, certainly there'll be a team, uh, Arsenal, Arsenal will be hoping that uh, uh, Brighton can get a goal back here late on. And I think that perhaps for their efforts this evening, they probably are due one, I think. Although City would obviously argue that they've probably done enough to keep a clean sheet as well. It'll be Barco with the outswinger. Really fizzes it in looking for Van Heck. Dealt well though by Manchester City and Baleba will get the ball. He'll just go all the way back to his goalkeeper. Three minutes of the five played. Independent offshoot of studio commentary. If you're just listening to the last few minutes of the game, it is, of course, Manchester City winning four goals to nil away at the Amex Stadium against Brighton. Just looking at the table as well, it does push City into second place, closing down Arsenal. They do have that game in hand, they're a point behind them. Arsenal do have the superior goal difference. But now City two points above Liverpool, game in hand. At Liverpool are three points off Arsenal. They are level on games with them. But really the momentum starting to swing in the way of the champions. Good ball though from Alvarez into Doku. Here can they make it five? Fantastic save from Steele. But just looking back, will Alvarez be able to get the ball? He just keep it alive. Penalty shouts from Alvarez. He's not really asking for it, is it? Maybe just a collision there. But Brighton have the ball. Baleba will clear it. Comes off of... A City player goes out for a throw in. A really good chance there. I, don't, I would like to see it again because good save from Steele, but maybe it should do could be doing better. It's a great ball from Guardiola. Not the great, greatest challenge from Van Hecke to try and cut that ball out. 
Then when it drops to Doku, I mean, he, he hasn't put too much curl on this. I think he's got enough uh, time to get to that ball. He's pretty much hit it straight out still. There's a little bit of turn on the ball, but if he perhaps gets a little bit of height on it and really whips it towards that back post, then I think Steele's going to struggle to make the save there. Steele keeps it four goals to nil. Doku nearly adding a fifth there. He's come on and as, as well, just winding down it, if you are. We spoke a little bit about it, but if you are deserve it, it's just one of them. You go against Sunday, Vitality, let's just forget about this. You said it yourself, Manchester City, there's many teams who have been really demolished by City and have just moved on. Is that just a case tonight as well? I think so. I don't think that Brighton have done anything uh, especially uh, uh, bad against City this season. They've made a couple of mistakes, but most teams do, and City are just the, uh, one of the best teams in the country at punishing you for it. Certainly they have been the best team over the past few seasons. And they're looking to try and build again now toward this uh, grandstand finish in this season. We pretty much had the uh, five minutes of injury time, but uh, City for the time being pushing forward again. Yeah, they're coming down the left-hand side with Grealish. So it's all eyes on the referee. We've just played the fifth minute. And the full-time whistle has blown at the Amex. A fantastic performance from Manchester City. Goals in the first half from De Bruyne. A double from four in the second half. Alvarez with the fourth. Full-time at the Amex. Brighton nil, Manchester City four.